What's up guys? I'm back. It's Mark Kevin Baltimore from Greek Material Tutorial Project. So thank you for watching my first video tutorial which is the project setup. In this uh, second tutorial we will discuss more about UI UX which uh, will help you to build a simple Greek Material application. So it includes uh, the nav bar, side nav, container and also the fav or floating action button. So let's get dive in. Okay, so let's get started on how to build our uh, first bit material application. So in order to do that, so we need first to take note our basic fundamentals, which is which are the nav bar, the side nav, the container, and also the fav or I would call it floating action button. So first we need to define our material header. So our material header will wrap two components. So it's the material nav bar and the material side. Nav. So first, let's define the material nav bar. So on material nav bar, we can define specific style, for example, background color. So I can set it to myself as a purple because it's my favorite color. And then what's inside the nav bar should be the material, uh, material nav brand, which is our app title. For me, I can call it material uh, my app. Sorry. And then next thing is we can we can set our material nav section which contains the most important navigational links into your application. So first, I can define it here, uh, login. And then the other one should be uh, sign up. And also, you can define also the specific uh, links into your material link using href attribute. So here, I can define it here, for example. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so this one. And then the other one should be sign. Okay, so now we have it here. Next thing is we need to, to float our nav section to the right so that it will not override, overlap the nav brand. Okay, so let's refresh our page in order to see how it looks like. Okay. Okay. So now we have it, we have some uh, minor issue, for example, the material app, we can push it uh, a little bit uh, to the right so that it will not be on the outermost left part. So we can uh, add a padding left, for example, here, 20 pixels. Okay, now the fix is working. So what's next is to define our material side now. So in order to do that, so I can call it below the material number. So material side now. And then we have a required type. So now I'm using a 1.5.1 version, which has a mi minimum and better naming convention for our type. So before our fixed type is an open type, our push type is a closed type. And also we have uh, other types like clip and uh, float. But uh, in order to to achieve it, so we have here a fixed type. So our fixed type will require a width of 280 pixel or as much as you want, for example, 300 or 400. So next thing is, if we have a fixed type, so remember that we need to to add a what we call this a padding left into our material header. So we can call it 280 pixel. And then what we need to do here is to define also our material link. So text, sorry, so text link one. And also I can add a icon. So I will copy it. So here, so link two, link three, and so on. Then next thing, so in order to connect the material number into our side now, we need to have a ID defined by our side now. I can call it myself my side now. And also we need to have an attribute for nav bar activates in order to activate that side now we define, which is my side now. And then next thing, uh, okay, so next thing is we need also to define our material content in order to do that. Here, so material container. Then we all know as 
just like the material header, we need to put it material padding left. We, we can call it 180 pixel because uh, it will overlap the side nav. So the side nav is visible on desktop. So it may require us to push 280 pixels the header, the container, and the footer if you have a footer into uh, into its defined width of the side nav. So here I have here material labor for example just to add the content. So this is main content. And then the other one so we can have center align. Then let's see okay. how it goes. So okay, so let's go back to our application. Okay, there you go. So we have now a fixed type, and then uh, okay. So let's see it on the mobile view. So it's working pretty neat. Okay, so now we have a fixed type. So take note that fixed type has two variations. Variation number one is the floating type, and also the other one is the clip fix. So let's get started with the floating type. So in order to do the floating type. So we must set the shadow to zero. So it means there's no shadow to be added. And also next thing is we need to move the side nav below the nav bar. So in order to do that, so we can just set the top of the side nav to be 64 pixels because it's the height of the nav bar. The next thing is we must push the nav bar into the most left part of the screen so in order to do that we, we could just remove the padding left of the header then let's see how it looks like okay now we have it so we have a a what they call this a fixed floating type Okay, so how about you want to put the menu button or the hamburger button into your navbar? So in order to do that, so you need two properties. First property is the uh, show on attached to be set to true, and also the other one is always show activator, which is the hamburger button or the menu button to be uh, enabled at the first glance. So let's now refresh the page. Okay, so now you can see that we have a hamburger button and then if we click it, so it's working great. So how about if we are in the mobile view, so the functionality is working great. So that's it. Okay, so the next variation is the clip fix. So the only difference with the clip fix and the floating fix is the shadow itself. So in order to do that, so we can just turn on the shadow of our, what to call this, our uh, side down. So if we refresh the page. Okay, so now we have a clip fix, but in order to get a better quality about your application, so we must set the background color of our body into smoke white or in material design it's a, a gray light and four or something so we can just uh, put it here so background color so it should be smoke white white smoke sorry uh, then if we refresh the page so we get a uh, what do you call this a good effect into our background and also plus our sign okay so it's working great. So okay, so next step that we need to discuss is the card type. So in material design, card type is very good for for a what to call this for <clears throat> a short list of uh, menu items. Plus, it could be uh, beside the content. So let's go on to the process. So if I go to our code, so we remove all the attributes that we've defined for the fixed type yeah and then what we need to do here is just to change the 
type to be card. So let's refresh the page and we will get the same effect as we expected to be. Okay, so now there's an animation opening and then if we close it, then hide it, uh, hide it. And then also after if we are on a mobile device, so we can see that it's pretty neat. Okay, so next thing that we need to discuss is a mini type side up. So mini type is good for uh, not showing a little bit of uh, information about your side up link. So we could just put it into an icon side up. So that's a short overview about uh, mini type. So let's get started. So in order to uh, put things up, so we could just uh, uh, set the type to be mini. And we all know that we all we only need the the icon instead of the text itself. So I will just remove everything into this. Okay. Then we can just uh, have a different set of icon, for example. So here. Okay. And then another one. Okay. So now if, if we hit refresh our page okay so now we have it by default does a uh, mini icon is uh, what you call this is hidden so you can uh, just set it on the show on true for example show on attach true so by default it's something behave like this so if you want to have a separator, so it will be applicable to any side nav types. For example, these links, you want it to have a horizontal line below the each icon. So you can just set here, for example, here separator to true, so that you can uh, divide each icon. Not only mini type, but you can apply it to other types of the side nav. So let's see how it looks like. Okay, so now you can see that it was separated. Okay, so the next step we're going to discuss is the push type. So push type is a good uh, side nav uh, layout in order for you to show your whole content at the first glance and your side nav will not be visible. And then if you click on the hamburger button as you see, so it will push all the content into the right side plus your nav bar and also your footer. So let's get started. So first, what we need to do here is to uh, set the type to be a push type. And also, I think it will uh, work like that. Then if we can, can go back to our, to our demo showcase. So let's see how it works. So now you have it. So you have a what you call this a, a nav bar that will be shown uh, that that will not be shown at the first load. And also, if we are on the mobile, so it's working pretty good. And that's it. Okay. So next thing that uh, that is important to our application that we are building is the fab. So fav or the floating action buttons are used for a promoted action. So it's something like this. So if I can show you a demo. So there are fav lists. So these are the lists. And also we have a, we have a, what you call this, a main action, which is the button itself. So let's get started on how to build this fav. So first, we can just call material fav into our application. And then we need a button, a button that will be visible at the first glance. So here we can just set the icon type, uh, for example, I can type it add. So then next thing is we, we can just uh, define the type that will be uh, floating. And then let's define also the size to have a large size. And then after that, we need the list to be uh, displayed hidden. So here we can just call material fab list. And then let's define all the button that should be added here. So I will just copy this uh, this one. And then the only difference is we can just uh, set the size to be the default one. And then next thing is we can just copy it paste. So I will just add 
four more buttons. The next thing that we need to do here is change the every icon elements. Okay. Then next one. Okay. So next one, next thing is we need to set its background color. So again, it's purple. Then the next one is uh, maybe orange. Next thing should be red. And next one should be blue. Okay. So let's see how it will be look like in our application. Okay, now we have here a what you call this a blue button, and we can see everything that we design into that part. And also we have a side nav that we made a while ago. And this one. So also you can add a tooltip into your floating action button or any kind of material widget that we've defined. So you can do it like uh, for example here. So here we can just have a tooltip. Uh, for example, this one is access time. And you can do a tooltip position to have it into the, uh, it will open into the left one. And then let's copy and paste. So this one, this one, also this one. So, okay, so we can just set it uh, uh, accessible. And this one is unique, and the other one is zoom in. So if we refresh the page, okay. Now you have a tooltip showing into the left part of each uh, fan list. So that's the end of our second video tutorial, building applications. So just uh, comment below in our YouTube uh, for your next requested uh, video. So we will add it in our next drop. Thank you very much and have a good day.